call to order. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. public comment um, we believe there are quite a few people here tonight wanting to comment upon the use of the plum pavilion requested by Ms. Pettit uh, we want to conduct the order in a meet, meeting in an orderly and efficient manner um, so before we start the public comment portion of the meeting could you raise your hand if you're here to make a comment about the use of that okay, yeah. four um, with four, I don't believe we need to amend our public comment. Yeah. 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 During your call, press star zero. After the tone, please state your name, followed by the pound sign. City Hall Conference Chambers. Thank you. You are the first caller to this conference. Please wait while others join. Okay, with four, um, we, we will not need to amend. Um, we do have our ordinance as a limit of 30 minutes for public comment, so um, that would take us to 20 minutes, so we'll still be under the rules. So we can um, go ahead and move forward with that. There's a five minute time limit, or sorry, a three minute time limit um, once you get started. I also wanted to mention um, the call to the public for support on this one. There were two items. Um, with why this is being discussed. Um, it's not a um, so much as allowing the concert, it's whether we would allow beer sales or ticketed sales on the pavilion. So our current ordinances state that beer sales are not allowed within City Park. And the ticketed no sales- No doing, Mayor All right, Jimmy, we're getting- Hi, Jimmy. We're getting started with um, right before public comment. Um, so item one was the beer okay. sales, and then item two were ticketed sales. Um, our current, um, as the pavilion was donated, there were people that donated funding to the community um, for the Plum Pavilion with the expectation it would always provide free entertainment for the citizens and streeter. So the ticketed event um, would go against that piece of it. So. Um, that's the kind of what the discussion council would be having regarding the manner, just so that you know um, that before beforehand. So at this point, I'll go ahead and I'll open up public comment. So 
anybody that's interested, you can go ahead and uh, step up because there's a microphone that way the phone, whoever's on the phone can hear you. Do you want to go first or? Joe Richard. And I have no problem with them doing an event. I have a problem with it being in the city park. Again, um, no ticketed sales and no alcohol sales. So find a different place to have your event and there's no problem. But I don't believe that the city should be put on the spot to host it. could be made to the existing ordinance. It wasn't until after we presented it that we realized that the entire ordinance would need to be changed. Um, having said that, um, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. The pavilion has been up for a significant number of years and uh, often sits unused. Um, it's a beautiful pavilion. It's in a beautiful city park. Um, I think if council would consider changing the ordinance to allow for um, ticketed events or paid for events on the stage, we could bring large bands that cost a pretty penny um, to that pavilion and make better use of it. In regard to beverage sales, whether they're alcoholic or non, for our event, um, what's critical to us is to have the venue. Um, beverage sales are secondary. If we uh, don't get approval or you choose not to uh, affect a change regarding alcohol sales in the city park, then we would have to adjust for that and sell non-alcoholic beverages and the ticket price would have to reflect the lost revenue. Um, I think at the Committee of the Home Meeting, Councilwoman Vidai mentioned that the uh, Pluto Fest and the Homebrew Fest included indirect sales of the sampling of beer. And I think that's the way other uh, other events in, in the street or take place. You don't necessarily directly purchase the beer at the event. You purchase a ticket, which then you redeem for a beverage. And we would follow that same protocol that's been used in other um, events and activities. Um, so we would be happy to go somewhere else if there were another stage, but there isn't one. It happens to be in the city park. So that's where it is, that's where we would hope to have our event because there is no indoor facility that can accommodate the number of persons we think would attend this event. Um, so we're kind of a little bit with our hands tied. That's where the pavilion is. That's where it was built. And sometimes things change. And in order for us to that bring that type of talent that. to Streeter and that quality of talent, then maybe we have to make some adjustments. Thanks. Morris, I'm more something of white forest. And uh, understand the tickets, you know, ticketing a little bit. Our club, we ran into this when we were having our slot meetings. We couldn't charge you the place. Well, a, a, don a donation. Um, many times I've, uh, when I went to go took the ticket thing on a, a donation, that would, I'm assuming that would be within the parameters that is in the state. Um, that's a question. Yeah, you can ask for donations yeah. at the event if you wanted to pass pay yeah, or whatever. But there's several um, I went to work. But donated. you, yeah, donated. but you can require a donation to enter. Yeah, well, yeah, it's the same thing we had when we had rented a place in Princeton. So that I would be able to be workable. And I'm all in favor of having a park being used by a big size, a large size event. My name is Marilyn Champlain, and I am 100% in favor of 
having the concerts back in the city park. We used to be up there a couple of years ago and they always had a great attendance. I may be mistaken, but I don't think they had any trouble from outsiders, insiders, or anywhere. As far as the beer sales, I do recall some outfit up in the park had a beer tent. How'd they get that through? I don't care if you have beer or not, but it'd be a great place to put those concerts back in that park. Thanks. Thank you. So I'll, let me explain the difference between a direct sale and an indirect sale. So a direct sale would be, um, I have a can of whatever, you pay cash for that. Indirect sales are, t you would buy a ticket. So the way that the latest festival worked with the indirect sales is it was homebrew. Um, it is local brewers that make their items to sample. By state statute, you're allowed to purchase three two ounce tasting tickets. Um, the home brewers do not get paid. They do this as a donation or a contest or between themselves as a way to, um, they do this more as a competition um, for the bragging rights that they won. And then the event that's thrown that um, for Pluto Fest keeps the $5 as a donation for themselves, but it's not buying a 12 ounce or bottle or can of an alcoholic beverage. It's specifically for homebrew or that kind of a sale. So that was the, that's the current ordinance that's allowed. Um, so it's, that's the difference between the two. Those people, actually several streeter people that had made their own beer were there. Um, <coughs> We had four. Anyone else would like to come forward? Me. I'd like to address council. Okay, we have um, one more person up for public comment. Can, can I just okay. Say we may do it. What do we do? Sure. Uh, I'm Cinda Bond, 614 North Ever Street. And I have been part of the organization of Jamin at the Clock. We provide 12 to 13 weeks of free entertainment in the summertime for this will be our seventh year in 2022. Um, talking about the proposal for Plum Pavilion, before getting to that, I think Council needs to uh, relinquish control to our city manager to give him the authority to decide what goes in or whatever of our city parks. Uh, moving toward a future decision should be made by allowing ticket events at the pavilion. To draw larger bands to fill that huge stage costs quite a bit of money. Uh, 4th of July committee had Eddie Carosa there, three-piece band, on Saturday afternoon, July the 3rd, and they just don't fill the stage up. We had the uh, IBCC Jazz Band on 4th of July, 15 members, big band, filled the stage. Um, and these ticket events would pay or the larger bands you need to fill that stage. I don't see the high school band or grade school band doing any concerts there. You know, the people in Streeter have showed their support for us every Friday night for 12 to 13 weeks. And uh, they would support a bigger band on that stage too. And as far as donations, I'm not sure about the figures, but ComEd doesn't print their own money. That money came from their customers, which are all of us in this room. Uh, Councilman Crouch has recused himself from voting on labor issues, I believe, before. And I think anybody on council should do the same that's on a nonprofit or on another taxing body to avoid conflicts of interest. And a person told me a wise man always changes and a fool never does. And I think that can apply here too. 
funny enough, the high school band was performing at 6.30 tonight on the pavilion. So they, were, they had a Facebook live that I watched before I came. Um, so, I did get to see them. Um, okay, one more. I'm in, my name is Eugene Muscody Jr. Uh, I'm at 518 South Bloomington Street, in the street here. Uh, I'm in favor of using the pavilion. If a uh, few local brewers want to have some samples, I think that'd be a great thing. Uh, let's use the pavilion street. That's all I got to say. Mm -hmm. Any other comments on here? Hey, um, Jimmy, you want to go ahead? Like public comment, yes, complete. I'd like to. Uh, I am a veteran, and I can tell you that uh, the veterans in this community hold that section of the park as sacred ground. I was very much involved working with the Deacon Trust on the uh, uh, Splash Pool replacing the uh, water fountain in the park and other things with the Hart Family Trust. And the uh, I don't think that any of those, as well as the Sobistrum Trust, uh, would like to see a venue of this nature in the city park. I think Mr. Plum, when he dedicated this land to the city of Streeter, he dedicated it primarily for public use only. Mr. Brozak has told me that next year there is a series of concerts that, that uh, he has scheduled and is currently is working on it. And those would all be free. Uh, the, uh, there's a couple of places with Bill Phelan's place and with Chad Lucas's place who have uh, venues currently that uh, they have stages for acts. Uh, and uh, a suggestion that was made to me was that the uh, chairman at the clock has been extremely successful and you guys are to be applauded for that. However, that maybe some of this group that are taking us um, are selling the liquor back in the park and everything else. 20 years ago, we had an issue in the park, primarily with the carnivals damaging the trees. And it's taken that long to get the park back the way it is right now. The, uh, and maybe that uh, a group could be formed and organized and look for a venue somewhere where the events that you're talking about could be held at a different location or the uh, uh, and I know that there's plenty of volunteers that will be willing uh, to help out on that but I just would encourage anybody who has not uh, to just take a walk down throughout the city park, take a look at those plaques for there, who has put up their money, and who has invested back into this community. And I do not believe that they would be receptive to having a venue where liquor would be sold. Not an event, it's not a place for someone to make a profit. It's for the public use only. And that's one of the reasons why that when we decided to build the pavilion, we said all venues would be open to the public, including weddings if somebody had a wedding and somebody else wants to walk through the wedding party, they are allowed to do so because it's open to the public and free. That's my comments. Mm -hmm. 
there any other public comments at this time? If not, go with item one, new business. Item one is resolution 20-2139, award of bid for demolition to Robert Shea, Pontiac, Illinois, in conjunction with the 305 South Illinois Street and 1201 East Livingston Street demo project in the city of Streeter. I get a oh, motion and <coughs> second to so authorize. Thank you. Second. Okay, Brian motion and Tim second. Any discussion? Well, I can just make a few remarks. Uh, the city has a list of homes that we would like to demolish this year. Most of the uh, costs would be borne by a, uh, a grant from the state. The status of that grant is on hold, pending some final court uh, decisions, and uh, and then the response from the state itself to deal with those decisions. Uh, so we're uncertain when, we're, when or if we're going to get those funds. Uh, these demolitions tonight uh, would be funded through uh, local resources. We did budget some general fund money this year, and it's important that we at least try to deal with problem properties without having to wait another year. You need a second. No, I have, no, I have a first and a second on this one. Any other discussion? Okay. Okay, hey, quick call the roll, please. Pete, aye. Aye. Crouch? Aye. Peary? Aye. McMillan? Aye. Mayor Lansford? Aye. Item two, resolution for the award of bid for demolition to GM Recycling, Streeter, Illinois, in conjunction with the 209 South Sterling Street and 207 Grove Street demo project in the city of Streeter. I get a motion and second. So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Brian and second by Matt. Any discussion on this one? So this is, a, I know it's the same uh, well, item and we, we bid these individually to get the best price. So. Right, so uh, there was a total bid for each of the bidders for all the properties and we, uh, Jeremy did a wonderful job by Specking it so that we could pick the little bit per property. <coughs> and that's what we did here. So we saved some money. Okay, any other discussion on this? Okay, barring none, clerk, call the roll, please. Be done. Aye. Crouch. Aye. Gary. Aye. McMullen. Aye. Carolyn. Aye. Aye. Okay, item three. A motion to receive and place on file the Planning Commission recommendation 2021-08 from October 12, 2021 to recommend approval and granting of a special use permit under the provisions of Title 17, 17.16010 to allow for outdoor parking of heavy equipment and the operation of a metal fabrication shop creating or assembling of light goods to be sold primarily on site in a C3 General Commercial Zoning District at the property commonly known as 1302 South Bloomington Street, Streeter, Illinois. I get a motion and a second. Okay. Motion for Tim, or by Tim. Second. Second by Matt. Do we know what this, the fabrication is going to be? I'll be like to. <laughs> The petitioner is here in the in the room, Jimmy. So we'll let him come up. Uh, maybe make, make some uh, buckets for small machines, like a skid steer bucket attachments. Um, if the city or somebody needed parts for a backhoe, such as a pin, stuff you can do on a lathe and a mill, them, them sorts of things. It has you know it has to do with equipment that's um, you know that I want to use for the other um, part of the special use uh, for. Uh, for heavy equipment on the property department. Okay. That's all I got. Okay, any other questions or any other discussion on this one? So this is to basically we're placing on file what the planning commission discussed from this item. Okay. Um, clerk, call the roll, please. Did I? Aye. Crouch? Aye. Gary? Aye. McMullen? Aye. Marilyn Lansford? Aye. 
Okay. Item four is approve or ordinance 2021-18 approval and issuance of a special use permit to Eugenio Muscody Jr. to allow for outdoor parking um, of heavy equipment and operation of a metal fabrication shop. I get a motion and second. So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Brian and second by Tim. Any discussion? Okay, so you're seeing none. Clerk, call the roll, please. Be done. Aye. Crunch? Aye. Gary? Aye. Rick Mullen? Aye. Mel Lansford? Aye. Okay, item five is a motion to receive and place on file the Planning Commission recommendation 2021-10 from October 12th, 2021 to recommend denial of a change in zoning and amendment of the district zoning map from R1B single family to C2 neighborhood commercial zoning district under the provision of the Streeter Municipal Code zoning code for properties listed at 511, 513, and 515 through 17 James Street in the city of Streeter, Illinois, counties of LaSalle and Livingston. I get a mo request a motion to receive and place on file. Great. Second. Okay, motion by Tim and second by Brian. So the zoning will stay the same? It's yes. Current. Yes, if we um, recommending denial on this one, um, we're placing on file the, the item six has approving the change in zoning. So if the motion's to approve, then we would want to vote nay if you do not approve that for the next item. So okay. this one's the um, place on file. All right, any other discussion here? All right, um, clerk, call the roll, please. Be done. Aye. Crouch. Aye. Perry. Aye. McMullen. Aye. Mayor Lansford. Aye. Okay. Item six um, would be actually changing the zoning. So this is approving a change in zoning and amendment to the district zoning map um, from, for 511 through 17 James Street. All lots being situated in Bruce Township, LaSalle County, Illinois from R1B single family medium density residential to C2 neighborhood commercial under the provisions of the city zoning code as set forth in Title 17 of the Streeter Municipal Code. So can I get a motion to either uh -huh. approve or deny? Okay. Okay. Motion by Brian. And second to Tim and is your motion to approve or deny? Got that circle. Yeah. Don't we just vote well, yeah. So we'll do a motion to approve the ordinance. <laughs> so if you're in favor, aye. If you're against, vote nay on this one. Um, any discussion? Don't get approval of, of uh, leaving the zoning as is? Uh, the, the approval would be to change it. So if you vote aye, it would be to change it. And if you vote nay, it would be to keep it the same. Okay. Ready? All right, clerk, call the roll, please. Be done. Nay. Coach? Nay. Gary? Nay. McMullen? Nay. Mayor Lansford? Nay. So item seven is motion to authorize the city manager to approve lien waivers up to $10,000. You get a motion and second to authorize the city manager to approve the waivers. So oh, oh, come in to take a comment. There okay. may be some liens that are up to fifteen thousand dollars and in the course of looking into it, I changed my level to fifteen. Okay. Um, but that I think most of them are sure. gonna be less. Uh, any any anything above fifteen I think that could kind of sense. So you get a motion to go up to fifteen thousand. Second. Okay. So that would be motion with by Tim and second by Matt. So any discussion on this one? Well, the city holds a number of lots uh, because we have demolished properties and. Uh, uh, 
as long as we own it, we're responsible for property maintenance. And these plots are also off the tax rolls. The idea would be to uh, encourage neighboring property owners to purchase the land um, and to, you know, then return it to the tax rolls and return it to private maintenance responsibilities. Uh, there are instances where outside investors are purchasing the property from back taxes and then the property owners and neighbors come to us and ask us to waive all the liens and and we have typically done that i'd like to get a little bit more involved in the actual negotiations because i have no idea what the outside investor is recouping on the sale of the property and it seems unfair to me where we would waive everything that we would would have leaned because of the ongoing demolition ongoing maintenance, you know, mowing the grass and so forth, prior to demolition and then the actual demolition costs. And then some outside investor makes a profit above what they had to pay in for the bad taxes. So I want to get a little I want to get involved in that transaction if we can and try to up the, the return as a, as opposed to just a blanket uh, lien waiver. But it's gonna require some negotiations and every case is going to be different, different set of facts and so forth. And so I'd like to have the authority to just enter into it uh, in line with the overall spending authority I already have as part of my position. Um, for this one, what oftentimes, um, what we want to do is encourage someone in the neighborhood to take these lots over. Um, we'll have, so we, like um, Dave said, we have um, a house that's demolished or and the city's mowing the grass, we're not getting any property tax income because it's now in the county or the city's hands. Um, so if a neighbor takes interest on it and wants to, to take over that care and upkeep, um, it's a benefit for us because when we no longer have that maintaining of mowing the grass, um, and we also have that back on the tax rolls where we can get some income from the lot. So um, that's just a situation where we do have the lien out there, but if we don't do, if we don't waive the liens, we may never sell that property. It may sit there on, on our issues for a long time. I, I, I think the, the, the buyer, the neighbor, the street or resident that owns the neighboring property kind of sets what they're willing to pay, right? And so I'm not trying to squeeze the buyer. I'm trying to squeeze the investor, someone who got it for back taxes, lives in Moline, and they're just trying to maximize what they're kind of trying to get. And so the city doesn't ever see anything back on it. Okay, any other discussion? Okay. Clerk, call the roll, please. Me die? Aye. Crouch? Aye. Fury? Aye. McMullen? Aye. Mayor Lansford? Aye. So item eight um, is, again, Tony Pettit's request to use the city park pump pavilion. Um, there's no ordinance attached to this one, so we do not need a motion or a second to approve this um, it's just on here as a discussion item um, we've done some some discussion already on this one um, so I'll say if there are any further discussion from council this time well I have a few I have a few items um, that I wanted to mention on this one okay said the um, if this was just to allow a concert, I think there's there's absolutely no issue. I believe all the council would have, would agree. Uh, more councils are great for the city, um, great for the livelihood, and um, the community in general. Um, through the years, several organizations have sponsored music on the stage, um, but where the requests on this are, outside of just having um, more usage of the pavilion comes down to the alcohol sales and ticketed sales. Um, again, we specifically have the no direct um, sales in the city park and the ticketed events. Again, I, Mayor Lansford mentioned it earlier, but we've had several donors put uh, money towards the Plum Pavilion with that expectation that it would be free entertainment um, for years to come. Um, Personally, I believe it's not in the best interest of the city to go back on that promise to the people that donated to us. Um, I know times change, but there's um, said several times when 
it's um, when we get something from the community, we want to honor what that original intention was. Um, an example of the letter um, to council mentioned the 4th of July committee and that committee, um, the 501c3 organization, very well supported in our community. And um, they specifically moved the event to North Point so that they could sell tickets and alcohol to recoup that money, um, support the event. So I think that move has done nothing but actually benefit and grow the fourth. Uh, if we tried to move the fourth back into the park, there wouldn't be enough room for it. So I don't really necessarily um, agree that that's where you have to have um, entertainment. So personally, again, this is me, um, two options. If ticketed sales and beer sales are needed to cover the cost, then absolutely an offsite location would be best. Um, but for pavilion use, possibly other alternatives for funding can be found. Um, railing the troops to be here is, is great and it's good to see um, citizens involved in our meeting. But um, there's also people that are willing to sponsor this kind of uh, acts to also provide free entertainment for our community. Um, one example, Street or Tourism helps cover costs for performances on the pavilion and um, that would be a good start if um, something like that were to be um, started. Um, you could book vendors and get a fee from them to try to cover some of the costs. Um, like I said, Street has always been a giving community and I'm sure that that can happen easily. Um, in the beginning of 2020, an organization that I'm on um, booked a large tribute band to perform on the pavilion um, pretty easily. I had sponsorships, um, three quarters of it covered within about a week. And again, that goes to the giving uh, nature of our community. Um, unfortunately, with COVID-19 and the shutdowns and everything, um, events had to get canceled and, and that didn't come through. Um, and again, for those um, music fans, I mentioned Street of Tourism, um, they're in the works to fund concerts again for next year. Um, with COVID, they put that on hold for the last two years just because of the rules regarding um, public outings and the uncertain nature that we've been living in for the last two years. Um, so plans are in the works to bring that series back stronger. Um, so that is what I have for that one. Again, I don't know if anyone wants to add anything in, um, but this one, there's no, we don't have action. So really what we would do is at this point, um, we wouldn't vote to change the ordinances or anything. We can vote to basically table and continue this and do further discussion, or we can kind of take a, um, into consideration the thoughts of the people up here and, and see if that's something we want to discuss um, any further. We can just go ahead and not really to say no, but just not put it as a topic to go ahead and go further on. So I would need, um, I guess, a consensus to as far as what we would want to do in that aspect. Motion to table. Okay, we have a motion to table this one. You get the second on that? Or any? I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion to table and a second um, by Tim and then by Matt. Is there any further discussion on here? I would just say that I, my biggest hang up on is the ticket. Um, I like Tara had said, I would recommend kind of going the route of the 4th of July committee and see what you can fundraise um, just so it can be open to everyone in the community. Um, I know also part of your expenses were privatizing the event. Um, so maybe give it a year of fundraising, even fundraising at your, uh, the weekly concert for a big grand finale or something along those lines. But I, I think it'd be pretty hard to go back on the ticketing thing just because then that would then set a future precedence as well. And that's what I'm afraid of is set precedence for every, free is free. Yeah. That's the intent of the pavilion. Um, doing my own research, looking at other communities in, in this area <coughs> that have a pavilion, everything is free. You cannot charge admission to a free facility that <coughs> is in the city. And I'm having a problem with that. Um, secondly, I'm having a problem with El Home Park. We've had a history of El Home Parks and that's what actually set this ordinance into motion. 
in the first place because it gets out of control. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm having a problem is a ticketed facility that was get to the park. Why are why are we tabling this? Yeah. I would say at this yeah, we we've got the motion to table, but it sounds like I've got I can understand. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you can come back with a plan that would work around the, the ticketing event, I'd I'd be open to hear it. I mean I'm not I'm not opposed to a concert at the park. I mean to me I just see it as another opportunity to maybe regroup and, and come back with a, a different proposal. If that's what you guys would like. Well, it, it's going to be the next the elected council is who will make that decision. Okay, so we so we have a motion to table and a second on that motion. Um, so it sounds like I've got four four not in this not at this time right now um so i would say if we want to maybe motion that or resend the motion and then we okay so tim will resend the motion and then what we would do is if you have can come up with another idea or a different way of, of setting this up um we can revisit that one in the future and and try to come up with some kind of a um a plan for it okay all right any other discussion on item eight before we move on I don't uh, think we should table it. No, we've rescinded the motion, so at this point, um, they need to come back with a new request. It, it's to give that committee an opportunity to come up with a different proposal to the council for study and evaluation, right? Right. I don't think we need to vote on it because there's no motion on the floor. Okay. So we we have we. So. So the item. So we can move go on to item nine um, consent agenda. Request a motion and second to approve the consent agenda with a fund warrant total of one million six hundred six thousand four hundred seventy two dollars and seventy five cents. So moved. So moved. All right, motion by Brian and second by Tim. Any discussion? Okay, uh, clerk, call the roll, please. Lee Dye? Aye. Aye. Sprouts? Aye. Geary? Aye. McMullen? Aye. Mayor Lansford? Aye. Okay, before we go into um, closed session, any uh, city official comments? Okay, none for Mayor? No. No. Uh, Tim, anything? Jimmy, do you have any comments? Who? Me? Yes, you. I think we were talking at the same time. No, I, I said what I believe. Okay. Um, there were and a few things. Um, this Saturday in City Park from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., Live Wall Streeter is hosting a prescription drug and over-the-counter drop-off. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to have any prescriptions or anything at home that you want to properly dispose of, you can drop it off. It's a drive through um, at City Park. You just need to remove labels or black out any personal information on there. Um, there's a um, disc golf tournament happening at Marilla Park. There's a two day event um, also happening this weekend. Um, day one is in Streeter, day two is at Baker Lake. Um, I believe that's Peru. Um, where this is through the Greater Juliet group, so there will be um, some visitors for that one. Um, so while they're in the room, there's a, there's a Moonlight Melodies at Knights of Columbus um, to benefit jamming at the clock. It's also happening Saturday, so somewhat busy weekend. And then as a reminder, um, as we are hitting the end of October, trick-or-treat hours are in Streeter are Sunday, October 31st from 5 to 7 p.m. And then there's also um, downtown trick or treats, typically the last Saturday of the month, and that would be Saturday, October 30th, from nine to noon. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah. this time, one com yes. comment on the on the uh, frisbee golf. Uh, that is a perfect example of uh, 
a couple of volunteers who happened to be students at the time came, did the manual labor with uh, help from our public works department and developed a um, course which now I think is rated number two in the state. The one out of Morello Park. It just shows you what uh, volunteerism can do if it's followed in the right direction. Okay. Right. Um, this again will request a motion and second to go into a closed session on collective bargaining. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, motion by Brian and second by Matt. Clerk, call the roll, please. Did I? Aye. Crouch? Aye. Deary? Aye. McMullen? Aye. Mayor Lansford? Yes. So we'll go ahead and go to executive session. Mm -hmm. 